Hey folks, this is Bobby Phillips with Phillips Pest Control uh, in Op, Alabama. Uh, I want to thank all y'all for watching our videos. Uh, my videos that I've been putting out with about yellow jackets have been really popular. Uh, I'm having a lot of comments, a lot of questions on YouTube uh, and on Facebook. And uh, it's hard for me to sit down and find the time to really respond to each question. So I thought that I would just, you know, write down a few of the ones that I'm getting a lot and, you know, answer, answer them for you. Uh, one question that I'm getting a lot is, why are you spraying water? Well, I'm not spraying water. I'm spraying uh, a chemical mixture. Uh, what I've been using on the majority of the nests that I've done this year is permethrin. Um, it's... A label, uh, an insecticide's label for exterior uses such as wasp nests and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't have an immediate kill. Uh, you know, it does spray out through a hose. Uh, on the, I know on one video, the one in the barn, you can hear me tell my dad to crank me up. I'm, I'm telling him to crank the machine that we have in the back of the truck that pressurizes my hose. So it's not water. Um, it's an insecticide, it has a little bit of residual to it. So what's, what's happening is, you know, any of them that are contacted, they're going to die. They're not going to die immediately, uh, but they're going to die pretty quick. Um, if they don't die, uh, contact it, there's a yellow jacket around the camera right there. If they don't contact it right then when I'm spraying them or if I don't get it on them, the workers that are out in the woods and such as that, when they come back that evening, that night, whatever, and they contact the surfaces that have been treated with that chemical, they will die. So it has a residual effect. Um, you know, I've had a lot of comments. People said, well, you know, I'd got me a couple of cases of such and such because it kills them immediately. We do have stuff that, that it will kill them immediately, pretty much on contact. But there again, a lot of that stuff has no residual effect. So if there are workers by the hundreds and by the thousands out in the woods and whatever, if you don't contact them, you're not going to kill them. So I like to use something with a, a residual. Um, that's one reason why I use the permethrin. Uh, also, the contact sprays, most of those are aerosolized in cans. Um, a great big nest like that, you're talking, it would have probably taken two cases of that stuff or more. And that stuff's not cheap. Uh, so, you know, I charge those people, I believe, 100 or $150. That's my average price to, to treat a nest. I couldn't even pay for the chemical for that, for that much. Uh, you know, and I, I don't want to go out there and, and, and have to charge somebody $500 to treat a yellow jacket nest. So I, I have to, you know, I have to be, I have to look at the economics of it. I mean, I, I can't go out there and spend $200 a, a worth of chemical and charge somebody $100 to treat the nest. Uh, when I can do just the same thing with the permethrin, although it acts a little bit slower. I've done hundreds of nests this year. Uh... You know, I always tell the people, avoid that area for a day or two. Let it, all the workers contact it. I've not had a call back all year. I mean, it works. It works. But you're just, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to get immediate knockdown unless you use something that's, that's very expensive to use. Okay. Okay. Now, here's a good one. And the people that have said this, uh, and have mentioned this, they're correct. It says, why don't, why don't you do this at night? And, you know, it'd be easier to do it at night when they're all in the nest. Well, the thing about that is our scheduling. Um, you know, we pretty much, our schedule is Monday through Friday. Um, usually we get to work around 7 and knock off 4, 4.30, something like that. I could do it at night. There again, that's something I'd have to charge for. I'd have to charge people more money. Uh, and I'm not all about the big bucks we're just trying to make a living we're not trying to make a killing and we're not trying to make our living off of just one person 
Uh, I've got four children at home. You know, nighttime's just not a good time for me to be be doing stuff. Uh, and I want to keep it economical uh, and keep it affordable for the customer. Uh, a little bit, a little bit more aggravating to do it during the daytime, but hey, it makes for a little bit more interesting video as well. But they're correct. If you did it at night, you know, they would all be in there and they, they wouldn't get stirred up as bad. Um, okay. Shouldn't you be wearing a respirator? Um, with the tank mix chemicals, uh, if you're not in a really enclosed area like a crawl space of a home, uh, you don't have to wear a respirator. The, the fumes off of that stuff's not that bad. Um, I have at times used some aerosol. If I was in a really confined space and I was going to be using that aerosol exclusively or, or heavily, then yes, I would put on a respirator and you should wear a respirator. Uh, but with most things, most things, if you're if you're in an open area and you're not enclosed, it's not required. Okay, here's one that I have gotten numerous, numerous times. Don't yellow jackets only live in the ground? No. Yellow jackets will colonize and build a nest in any uh, crack, crevice, wall void. Um, hay bales, of course, y'all saw that. Um, in the ground, of course, most definitely they will build in the ground. Um, but anywhere that that queen can get that she feels safe and she's comfortable and it's in a cavity, um, she, they'll build a nest. These are yellow jackets. They are not hornets. They are yellow jackets. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, bald face hornets, which most people are familiar with and make the football looking nest up in trees, they are not a hornet. Technically, they are yellow jackets. Even though they're black and white in coloration, a bald face hornet is a yellow jacket. Uh, I want to believe that the only true hornet in the United States is a European hornet. So, yes, yellow jackets will nest in the ground, off the ground, in old vehicles, in old barns, in the wall of your house, uh, in the eve of your house, and if you've watched the video, you've even seen one that I treated this year. They were going into a lady's utility room off her garage, and they weren't really even in a void or anything. They were just behind a, I believe it was a bag of pot and soil or a pot or something in a corner, and they had started their nest in that corner. So it was just in the room. Um, so no, yellow jackets do not live exclusively in the ground. Um, I think that covers most of what has been asked of me. Uh, there are many other questions on there. Um, I've tried to respond to a lot of them. Uh, but you would have to look down through the comments. Uh, but just just to, to recap, I'm not spraying water. I am using a chemical. Um, the reason that I don't use immediate knockdown chemical for the big nests like that is the cost. You know, if my cost is high, I have to pass that on to the customer, and I just don't see any reason in doing that. Um, costing a little old lady $500 to take care of a yellow jacket's nest when I can do it for $100 and do it just as good. Uh, you know, uh, don't do them at night generally just because that's not on my schedule and I have four children I have to take care of and I'd rather be at home with my children at night than, you know, out doing something such as that. Like tonight we're going trick-or-treating, so. Um, I had something else that I wanted to talk to y'all about. Um, you know, I, I just, the, the response has been tremendous. I appreciate everybody watching. Um, I want y'all to continue watching. 
and I'm going to, you know, people continue to ask for more and more yellow jackets, of course, it's getting toward winter time. Uh, we won't be running up on any yellow jackets probably until next spring. Uh, when we do, I'll get back in on those, but in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to try to bring you some bed bug videos, some, some cockroach videos, um, just anything that I can come up with that I think might be interesting to you. That's that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, now I remember what it was. Uh, I did a a yellow jacket nest. It's been about a month ago, and we're we're this is along the lines of cost. Uh, a lady called and I went out and that she had some yellow jackets going up in the eave of a house. So. Uh, a national company, I will not mention any names, I'm not going to badmouth anybody. A national company had been out there and quoted this lady. She had a yellow jacket nest in her eve. They had went out there and told her she needed to have all of the insulation in her attic removed. They needed to replace it with an insulation that's impregnated with an insecticide. And, you know, she told me everything they had told her, but they had told her it would be right at just, it was just a few dollars short of $10,000. And all she was worried about was a yellow jacket nest. She had some small children, and it was in a corner of a back porch. She had finally told them that she did not want her insulation replaced or anything like that. She just wanted the yellow jackets gone. And when they finally agreed to give her a price on that, they wanted $500. I treated her yellow jackets nest. It took me approximately 10 to 15 minutes. They had uh, one entrance going up into this eave. Uh, I filled that up with some, with some aerosol to get all up in the, the nest. Um, and then treated around the exterior entrance with some uh, something with residual and she's not had any more problems. 15 minutes I think I charged her $100. Um, folks don't let people take advantage of you. You know they, they, this was what this company was trying to lay on her and again it's a national company. You see them on TV I can promise you that. That was just ridiculous what they were trying to talk that woman into because of the yellow jacket yeah. First of all, the nest, a yellow jacket nest, is just paper. It's just paper up in there. So, you know, that's up in there in her insulation. Basically, it's insulation in itself. So there's, once you kill them out of there, there's no use in, in having to remove that. Um, yeah, it's just right there in one little corner. Uh, they're not honeybees. They're not going to come back every year to the same place just because they were there before. Um, so... Anyhow, I hope I've answered some of your questions, and, you know, I really do appreciate y'all. Just just keep keep subscribing, keep watching, and uh, thank you so much. And, you know, if you're around South Alabama, we would love to have you as a customer and as a part of the Phillips Pest Control family. Um, you can call us at any time at 334-493-6199. Thank you for watching and God bless all y'all.